Welcome back, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This is National Master Laurent Belaquez, and today we'll take a look at the standings to see what happened. So, Middle Monco Division, Upper Dublin, four wins, 13 points. Germantown Academy, two wins and a draw, and one loss, 13 points also. Norristown area, two wins, two losses. North Penn, two wins, two losses. Perkiomen Valley, one win, one tie, and two losses. And climb out to uh, four losses. Lower Manco Division, Abington, three wins and a tie. Lower Moreland, two wins and a tie. La Salle, two wins, two, two ties. Penn Charter, one win, one tie. Philadelphia Academy, one win, two losses. Mass Charter, four losses. Country Line Division, Council Rock, four wins. Hadborough Horsham, three wins and a loss. It's good to see Hadborough Horsham back on the top. William Tennant, two wins, two losses. NEG Dolestown, one win, two losses. Penridge, one win, three losses. Archbishop Wood, three losses. Lower Bass County Division, NEG Yardley, three wins. Pensbury, three wins. Holy Ghost Prep, two wins and one loss. Franklin, Franklin Town, one loss, one win, three losses. Father Judge, three losses. Second Academy, two losses. Okay, now let's see the game that was played on, on first board between Holy Ghost Prep and Pensbury with White. Tom, who's like a 16, 1700 rated player, and on from Pensbury, who is like a 16, also 16, 1700 player. Pretty close in ratings. Now let's see what happened in the game. E46, D4, D5, the French defense, advanced variation with E5, C5, C3, and Queen B6. Now Black is pressuring the D4 pawn, and he wants to pressure this pawn usually with the two knights and the queen. Knight f3, bishop d7. Knight a3. Interesting move, because the knight could come back to c2 and protect to d4, and sometimes go to e3. Knight h6. It's interesting how both of the knights, they went on the sides. And white could take the knight, but then he black will have the bishop pair. And same with black. Black could have taken the pawn on d4 and then take the knight and then we'll give up the bishop pair. Bishop e2, knight f5, short castle and knight c6. Like we discussed, this was black's plan to pressure on d4. Knight c2, that was white idea to overprotect the d4 pawn. Rook c8, and now white played king h1. Is it? I have to say it's an interesting move. I mean, it, it's <laughs> prep move sometimes. Is it give, you give the move to black to see what he wants to do. I'm, I'm not sure if he was preparing g4 or not, or he just wanted to give the move to to black. Uh, ah, with black, I will have played bishop e7. And if white plays g4, then I will be a happy camper because after knight h4, knight takes h4, bishop takes h4. Yes, you do have f4, but I could just castle because after f5, I just play f6. Yes, you could take, but this doesn't bother me. Okay, may maybe white should have taken here in between to on d4. But then I, I like this bishop e7. Uh, c takes so g4, c takes d4, c takes d4, or after g4, so maybe pawn takes d4, pawn takes d4, bishop e7, and now when you play g4 knight takes bishop takes f4 a castle and f5 i can play f6 and after this all these pawn trades the bishop will come and attack the pawn 
is, uh, I don't know what was what was White's plan with King H1. So Black took on D4, and then Bishop E7. He should have played here. He prepares Knight H4 in in case of in case of G4, and in the same time. He prepares castling and he could break the center, undermine the center with f6. Now, black played knight a5, the, which is typical in, in the French because you want to play on the queen side and you want to play knight a5 and knight c4 and open up the file for your rook. And even sometimes you could trade the bishops on b5. So, uh, knight a5 has a lot of ideas. However, here mm, I would have preferred bishop e7, and you still have this knight a5 idea. Now you will ask White what he wants to do. Does he wants to play g4? He can play knight d3 because you take on d4. Uh, black has no problems there. So what is this king h1 is gonna accomplish? It looks like you will go into the the same positions but with bishop e7 benefits more black than king h1 because black could castle and push f6 king h1 i don't see how king h1 will help but in the game it did help knight a5 because now it was no more pressure on d4 and white could play knight d3 and white idea was to trade off this knight and open up the f-file. Black should have not take on e3. I, I will not open up this rook because white has a huge attack here after knight takes e3. So either way you, you leave it there or you play g6 even or that but you don't take. Why? Because after knight takes e3, f takes e3, f7 pawn is really 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 weak. But black didn't care. He just had this plan with knight c4 and he said you could do whatever you want. White went up, black went for a pawn on b2, but white has a huge attack here on the king side. And knight takes b2, queen d2, attacking the knight, and the pawn still hangs. Bishop a3. Well, I don't like Bishop a3. I mean, I don't like what White did, even though it was nothing wrong. He could just play Rook b1 and pin. Probably he was he was afraid of Bishop takes c knight c4, and probably didn't see that after Bishop c4, Queen takes b1. You could take in between on a3, I attack your queen and my bishop protects the rook and this bishop is a powerful bishop, he ca catches the king in the center and knight f7 comes and knight d6 comes and it, 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 this is just showtime. So in the game white could have played rook b1, he didn't which was nothing wrong after bishop takes b2, queen takes b2, queen takes b2, bishop takes b2, rook b1 he played simple, he said I still have the threat on the bishop and I still have the threat on the pawn rook c2, protecting the bishop, attacking the bishop and bishop d b1, rook d2 and after knight f3 both pieces are hanging black give up the exchange but after rook takes b7 is in, is in big trouble because the bishop hangs and the back rank mate I mean the back rank hangs also rook takes a7 f6 and rook b1 and this is this is over here for black he tried to play king d8 but after check bishop c8 rook takes c8 king takes and basically you lose a whole rook so it was an easy win for white Uh, I would say the key moment of the game was here 
with black should have just played bishop e7 be patient prepare for the middle game prepare castling prepare knight a5 prepare knight h4 prefer, prepare castling prepare f6 preparation do not rush and you should just let white to show his cards why he played king h1 what's his plan what's his idea so this was the first game and I'm gonna save it and let's see if we have or we don't have a second game so that was and today we have a bonus you guys you're gonna get a bonus so second board between Brandon and Andrew Shomaji so Queen's Gambit declined and then transposed and the Queen's Gambit accepted e3 to get the pawn back c5 is typical move bishop takes c4 c takes d4 knight takes d4 mm, it was interesting to take with the pawn to have a, an isolated pawn and white will have the b1 h7 diagonal to attack the king in the middle game after castling but in the game white took knight takes d4 nothing wrong maybe black should have played knight c6 castle and take now so if knight takes knight takes queen takes queen takes and then pawn takes so basically you are forcing white to to take back with the, with the pawn and then you have an isolated pawn and it's a matter of taste of you prefer white or black so black would, would love to block the isolated pawn with knight b4 for example and if it's a3 knight d5 and trade off pieces and prove in the end game that this isolated pawn is weak white on the other side will would like to use that pawn and that pieces and for activity like for example something like this with bishop c2 queen d3 he has the e5 square for his knight he has the bishop for on g5 it has the d1 rook e1 squares for the rooks so everything will be transferred towards the king side for example a6 bishop g5 b5 uh, uh, it's it's already it's a problem because I want to take on d5 so you're forcing g6 and that's now white has compensation because we can the the black squares around the king so you this is how usually the game will go and why could just play bishop h6 rook e1 uh, 94 and 95 and white has a good game he has compensation for this isolated pawn let's go back to the game where pawn takes knight takes a6 is a typical move because it takes away the b5 square from from the white pieces and prepares b5 a4 very interesting it, it will stop b5 however give up the b4 square which black played right away castle castle and now black is a little bit behind development so here pr was probably the problem for for black and he didn't know how to develop i'm just curious to see what the computer says here uh, bishop d6 is interesting because the knight from f3 is always missing and you're threatening also queen c7 so bishop the bishop hangs and now can you sacrifice on h2 bishop takes king takes knight g4 if king h1 then king g1 queen h4 king g3 
this doesn't work. So king takes if so we prepare knight g4, knight f3, knight g4, king here, king g1 and queen takes d3. So bishop d3 is a mistake. So probably that's why white has to play f4. But then bishop d7, let's say you play knight f3, queen c7, queen b3 like in the game, and black finishes development. And here black could connect the rooks and castle. Uh, black never finished the development in the game. So queen c7, queen b3, attack the bishop, and the first moment the key moment of the game he give up the bishop well this is a monster bishop this is a good bishop this is a bad bishop and this it's worth a lot of a lot of points very strong bishop so black should have played bishop d6 attacking on h2 tempo versus tempo you have to do something about that pawn and then you come back to development either way rook d8 first or knight c6 so rook d8, rook c1, knight c6 and even though you're gonna double up your pawn, I mean you're gonna have isolated pawns at least you have you're gonna complete your development, you're gonna finish your development and just play a regular game because in the game after Queen b3, black choose to give up his bishop, bishop takes, bishop takes, and now white has the bishop pair, which is a long-term advantage. In open positions, the bishops are better than a, than the knights, or two bishops are stronger than a bishop and a knight in open positions. That's why it's a long-term advantage. Rook e8, very passive move, but Brandon played knight f3 also passive we, rook c1 he should have put the rook on the open file and line up against that queen well, if bishop d7 and now after knight f5 bishop takes and bishop takes f6 and now we see the power of rook c1 Bishop takes e8, and bishop takes e8, and white is up on exchange. Uh, knight f3, white is still better because he's ahead of development, and the bishop pair, black, didn't know how to finish development. He should have played knight c6, and even though you're gonna take on f6, pawn takes, black. You know, he has some problems, but it will be still better than in the game. Bishop d3, e5, uh, knight h4, bishop e6, and at least you finish development. Uh, in the game, after knight e4, White played bishop e5, good. Queen e7, and he chose to trade off queens. I, I, I will not trade queens, but I will have played probably queen c2, attacking this knight, weakening the pawn structure, and attack this knight, and then just come back to 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 the. e6 weakness which is pinned and I'm threatening to take on f5 so if you play king h8 bishop takes rook takes bishop takes a6 and the rook hangs so queen a3 he just helped black after with the queen trades and now black should have just played bishop d7 and finished development if you play rook d1, I play rook c8, bishop, I don't know, e2, d3, let's say d3, and bishop c6. And the bishop protects the knight, you have the square for your knight, and 
you connect the rooks in the back rank, which was the main problem of the game. You, Black never finished development, never connected his rooks. So knight c6, rook d1, rook belongs to open files. Knight takes c5, knight takes c5, and this bishop cannot get out and, and the rook cannot come into the game. Knight c5, b4 very good, knight d4, f3 very good, knight f6, black moved a million moves with the knight, didn't accomplish anything. a5, this has the idea of fixing the pawns on the queen side. So it was a good strategical move, king f8, and here why should I play e4 to take the square away from the knight? And in any kind of endgame, you could just bring all the king all the way down to b6. And this is this is you know easy win. So strategically, white is winning here. King e7, e4 again. I I prefer. White played bishop b3. Probably wants to play bishop a4. H6, bishop a4, rook f8, knight c4. e5, give up a pawn, and bishop e6. Bishop d7, black should have just taken d7 and play rook d8, trade a pair of rooks, and suffer in this endgame. Uh, in the game he played rook d8, and bishop takes e6, rook takes d3, knight takes d3, and pawn takes and knight c5. Black should have should have played for activity, and after knight takes b7 to play knight d5 and look for some counterplay. Rook d4. Maybe if he white is not careful then black could take on b4 and if then I protect my pawn and if rook takes b4 b1 check and the king just go out to g3 It would be, I mean, black played really passive the whole game. Rook b8, and finally e4, and now it's total domination. The, the pieces are super passive, rook is, 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 is passive, the knight has no squares to go. He has to defend the d7 square, which is a critical square. And the black didn't, he let white to come in with the rook. This is game over, rook takes d7 and check and why just trade it yeah, why could I just play d5 and take the squares away from from the knight but he said you know I, I'm just gonna trade take 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 king f8 knight takes king e7 knight c5 king d6 and knight takes e6 so I hope you guys you enjoyed the games you guys you got a bonus two games this week Good luck in your games, and if I don't see you guys next week, then happy holidays and happy new year.